In this lecture, we're going to have some fun. Now that we've been through the definitions and we've looked at those probability formulas, we're going to put them to work and really see what we can do, the, do with them and what they mean. Now, before we get started, I want you to do two things. If you're going to play along at home and you're really going to take this seriously, I need you to pause the video and I want you to write down these questions. You have to be an active participant. Also, you need to have your calculator ready, have your pencil ready, so that you can do this and, and be actively doing and thinking statistics. Now, pause the video and write these questions down. And make sure that you have a list of these seven formulas in front of you. Seven common probability rules. The complement rule, the addition rule, conditional probability rule, multiplication. You don't have to write down the names for them if you don't want to, but you need to have these formulas in front of you so that you can reference them. One of the hardest things about statistics for most people is the fact that you have so many formulas and you have to decide what information am I given and how can I use it to answer the question I'm being asked. And it's only by having these formulas in front of you and really understanding at a, at a really gut level um, can you figure out how to use them. So write these formulas down as well and then we'll come back. All right, so what are we going to be doing um, in this video, we're going to use a table of data that I collected back, uh, oh, about six or eight years ago for a study. This is the study that I'm most famous or most infamous for, you might say, is a study on red light cameras in Greensboro, North Carolina. So if you, if you Google my name, um, a lot of the hits that will come up are related to this red light camera study and you will see that a lot of people love me because of this study and a lot of people hate me because of this study. This is one of those interesting things in statistics where as a statistician I am looking to know the truth as much as the data can tell me. I, I want the world to speak to me through numbers and I don't care so much what the answers are as long as I've done my best job uh, my best job best I can do to find the answers um, but then you're gonna make people either happy or unhappy the people who want to see a certain kind of answer they'll be happy the people who wanted a different answer they'll be unhappy and they'll call you names so just a warning just a warning but uh, here's this data for, uh, this is almost three years uh, worth of data. Well, it's actually a three and a half years, I believe, of data. 99, 2000, 2001, and, and most of 2002. Uh, we looked at 303 intersections that had stoplights. And we collected all kinds of information about all of the accidents that happened there. Now let me uh, zoom this down so you can see all these numbers. Okay, I think you can see everything now. Uh, so this is what's called a cross-tabulation um, that we talked about with uh, descriptive statistics. We took 7,581 accidents that occurred in the city where I live in Greensboro, and uh, we categorized them in a lot of different ways. But in this table, we're looking at what type of accident was it, was it an angle accident where the front of a car hits the uh, side of another car? Was it a rear end accident where one car was slowing down or stopping? Was it a left turn where a car was making a left turn and hit a car that was on the same road as that car, etc.? Was it a head on? Was a car backing up and hit another car or something like that? Did you hit an animal? Did it involve a uh, bicycle or a pedestrian? And we just count in this cross tabulation how many accidents uh, were of each of those types. And also, is there a relationship between type of accident and injuries? Now, very briefly, FTL means someone was killed. An A injury means the most severe injury was a disabling injury. So think about A as a severe injury. B is what's called an evident injury. Think about it as a moderate injury. C injury technically is a possible injury. 
think about it as a minor injury if you want. PDO stands for property damage only. So for example, in this cell right here, this 60, says that there were 60 accidents where it was a side swipe in the same direction and there was a C injury involved. Now notice that word and. The word and comes from the intersection, right? And so in a table like this, an intersection comes at the intersection of a row and a column. So this is 60 accidents. This is 1,046 accidents. Now the total over here, 2,373 accidents, is the total of the rear end slow or stop accidents. And down here on the bottom, 55 accidents were severe injuries, A, the total of the severe injuries. This is with frequencies. Now since we're talking about probabilities, let's convert this into a, what we call a joint probability table. And a joint probability table is where we take all those numbers that we saw in the table above and we divide them all by 7,581. That converts them into probabilities, numbers between 0 and 1. So for example, now the number in this cell, rear end slower stop and C injury, this is the probability. This tells us that 13.7, well, 13.8% of accidents are rear end accidents and involve a C injury. So now that we've spent a lot of time getting used to this table, let's actually calculate some probabilities using it. Now from our list of probabilities we're going to calculate, I told you to write these things down, so let's just talk about these quickly here. Where would you find the probability that an accident involved an A injury? We would just read it off the table right here. The probability is 0 0.007255. Now, what about the probability that an accident is a head-on accident? That's over here, under the total, 0 0.0125313. So a little bit more than 1% of these accidents are head-on accidents. What is the probability, where would you find the probability that an accident is a head-on and a property damage only accident? That would be right next door here. At the intersection of head-on and property damage only, 0 0.004485. Now, how could we find the probability that an accident is a head-on or union or a property damage only accident. Well, here's what we're looking at in the table. We want all the head-on accidents right here. Let me highlight them for us. And we also want, so we want all the accidents that are either head-on or property damage only. So we want um, all of these as well. Now how are we going to get this union? we're going to use the addition rule. Anytime you see a union, think about the addition rule. And the addition rule says, take the probability of the first thing, head on, which is right over here, the 0 0.125313, okay, and add to that the probability that an accident is a property damage only, 0.546498. If we stop there, we double counted something. The addition rule says we have to subtract off what we double counted. What, it, what did we double count? Well, we double counted those accidents that were both property damage only and involved a head-on collision. So the addition rule says take the head-on, add to it the property damage only, and then subtract off what was double counted because it's both in that row and in that column. Pause the video and do that and see what you get. Okay, using the addition rule I got 0 0.5550263. So again, take the hit probability of a head-on plus the probability of a PD property damage only and subtract off that intersection.
that we were talking about earlier. Now the next problem, what's the probability that uh, an accident involves an angle accident? Where would we find that? Well, it's here's the angle accidents and just over here at the total. Now sometimes people call a probability like this, the probability of just one thing, angle accident, a marginal probability. And the reason they call it a marginal probability is because you find it out in the margin on one end of the table. 0.3264741. Right? So 0.3264741. Now, the next question somebody might ask you is how would we find the union of the probability of an angle accident? So what's the probability that an accident is either an angle accident or a rear end slow or stop accident? Let's go back to the table and look at that. Well, here's the probability that an accident is an angle accident, 0.3264741. Since it's a union, we'd, we'd think addition rule. Well, let's go through the addition rule here. The addition rule would say, take the probability an accident is an angle accident, add to it the probability that an accident is a rear end, slow or stop, right below it here, 0 0.313.0194, and then we'd need to subtract off the intersection of those two things. What is the probability that an accident could both be an angle accident and a rear end? in slow or stop? Well it's zero and let me tell you why. In a table like this an accident can only be in one row at a time and one column at a time. These rows are mutually exclusive. You cannot be two types of accident at once. Similarly these columns are mutually exclusive because what we're recording in these columns is the most severe kind of injury that happened. So since these are mutually exclusive, you can either be an angle or a rear end, but you can't be both, then the addition rule is going to look like this. We take the probability of the angle accident, add to it the probability that an accident is a rear end, and subtract zero. When two things are mutually exclusive, the probability of the intersection is zero. They can't happen at the same time. So pause the video, add those two up. All right, the answer I got, 0 0.6777604, or approximately there's a 68% chance that an accident is either an angle accident or a rear end slow or stop. Those are the two most common types of accidents in this table. I have them sorted from most common to least common in this table. Now let's stop here and I'll come back with a second part and we'll answer these other questions about conditional probabilities.